The high school band. A drum kit in a garage, three or four power chords on an entry-level guitar, maybe a cover or two. Those bands are how a lot of musicians cut their teeth early in their career. But it's not super common for them to move much farther than a high school auditorium. This band is the exception. This is Kingston Live, and today we're sitting down with a band that's been playing bars before they were old enough to get past the bouncer. Since their 2019 debut album, My Dealer is the Internet, the Astros have embraced sounds popularized decades before they were born. Their high-energy pop music blends in flavors of the 70s and 80s, whether it's fuzz-drenched guitars like something off a Blue Cheer album, or dreamy synth textures that would sound right at home on a new wave record. But the Astros are more than the sum of their parts, and it's the combination of influences and their pop hooks that blend into something special. Now the Astros are preparing for the release of their second record, Sci-Fi Radio, a record that continues to refine their sound and push the boundaries of pop production into intergalactic territory. It's got everything you'd want in a city, but without committing to a giant city environment. Kingston has this history of this kind of camaraderie. There's so many awesome musicians out there that they come out of the woodwork every year. We knew Kingston had everything for us. Kingston Live, we are hanging out with the Astros. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Yeah, I'm, I'm Ben. I'm Andrew. I'm Tim. I play the drums. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, welcome to Kingston Live for the first time. Uh, so this has been, I feel like this has been a long time brewing because I feel like I've seen you guys kind of grow and, uh, and build as a band. And this is the first time we've had you on the podcast. So welcome. Thank you for, uh, I'm glad we could finally do this. Yeah, thanks for having us. This is, this is great. So uh, I guess first off, let's uh, start with a little bit of background because you guys have been around for... It's hard to say how many years now because the the world kind of like was on pause for a while and I don't remember how long it's been. So how long have you guys kind of been in the Kingston scene? Three, three years? Three years. I think uh, 2019, I'd say was the year like really did it. I would say like solid under this name. So 2019. That's the safe bet. Mm -hmm. We probably don't right before remember. everything tanked. <laughs> yeah, just right before everything tanked is when we started. Well, like four month gap where we played and then it went away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that really leads into my my first question too, because it felt like you guys were really building such a great spot, and then obviously the world sort of ended for a little while there. And I also feel like you guys would have such a unique perspective on that, not only as a band that was really getting going just at the tail end of 2019, but also as young guys who are like 19, 20 coming out of high school going into college like that's such a a formative chunk of your life that just kind of went away for two like having to sit at home for two years is such a weird thing to experience what was that like from your side of things well it was what was especially weird was how it, it kind of like two things we got hit one after the other where covid hit right when we were starting to record some new stuff and we kind of worked our way around recording that but then right as things were maybe starting to look okay Tim goes to Ottawa for school, and then I go to London for school. So then not only do we have COVID where we're shut down and don't know if we can, we definitely can't play and don't know if we can record or, or rehearse or whatever, immediately after that, school. Um, <laughs> and so everything just started being, well, I mean, I'll make some artwork and send it around or I'll make a demo or something, but nothing is happening. And it's just, it was very strange. And it's just good to be back finally <laughs> and actually be all in the same room. I'd agree. I, I think like... It really sucked breaking apart, but it is nice. Like, the gap has been nice in a way because when we started, like, like we were like 17, Tim was 15. So playing in bars was tricky. And it was, it was like an uphill battle to go play in places. And you would play and they'd be like, coming to check us. They're like, you're not 19, right? You can't drink and you got to leave when you're done. Like, you probably shouldn't be here. Um, and so, like, it's nice now. Uh, so we don't have that battle either. So, we didn't have to go through two, three years of continuing that, which which it was great to do. But now it's just like, oh, we can play bars and all that sort of thing. So there's a nice little piece to it, too, in that three-year gap. But it was definitely a pain trying to figure out when four members are spread out across Ontario how to do it. <laughs> it also completely changed the process, too, because everything from the first album and then the two EPs, 
mostly was put together with just the four of us in a room just making stuff and and then kind of forming it together and that's why you see a lot of our early stuff will be like longer songs or the like in, in stuff, like very much longer songs <laughs> so um, like that jam was nine minutes yeah. today if we cut it down to five maybe people yeah. will listen maybe and, yeah and now because of being split up whereas i was making a lot of the demos in london there's more time to trim the songs down right it's like i'm programming all the drums so there's no jamming for 10 minutes in a room it's like okay let's i'm gonna build this song to be three and a half minutes and i think that's helped our songs be a lot stronger now the ones we have coming in a lot shorter and a lot shorter <laughs> yeah. and everything is the needed. approximate length to be attached yeah. to an email yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let, um, yeah exactly. yeah and i was going to ask uh, about that process because i've heard from other bands about the the difference of suddenly having members you know kind of scatter themselves out going out for similar reasons you know going to school or just life takes you to another 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 spot that uh, collaboration side where you said you know it used to all be in one room and now you're you're more isolated is that what has really led you to to changing your sound have you found yourselves getting more i don't know like isolated while you're still writing together if that makes sense uh there's, there's a lot in there to unpack. Um, <laughs> that's, that's a lot. Well, As I said that, I was like, do these words even make sense? Yeah, no, no, it's really, it's a really good question. I was hoping Ben would take it. Um, <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah, there's been a ton. I mean, Ben uh, is is sort of the creative genius to the band. He's the one who yeah. is foundational to everything and writing most. The Dave Grohl um, the band. The Dave Grohl. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. He's the, he's the guy behind it chair. all. And then the rest of us get to throw our names on it, usually. Um, but it's it's been good like a lot of it was Ben would have an idea and send it over and uh, and we would take a look and be like yeah that's really cool um, every once in a while Ben would come home uh, from London and we would get little breaks where him and I could sit together and write and we would get some songs out of that or nothing uh, which would happen <laughs> yeah. too yeah. Uh, but a lot of it was uh, a lot of it was like Ben's hard work and and figuring it out and then the rest of us being like okay can we jump on this is this an astro song is this your song that sort of thing but uh, in terms of changing the sound that just sort of came organically in terms of like stuff that we wanted to play and stuff that was fun for us we don't really go like okay we got to make a pop song or we got to make a rock song or we got to do whatever it's just sort of like happens and we're like that's fun and we're gonna do it and we don't really want to be like oh we can't play that because we play rock stuff or we mm. we play pop stuff we just want to have fun with it and that um, that collaboration is still necessary though like i think you'll see when when the album comes out if you look at the credits the ones that have andy and i's name are the best ones like because <laughs> that like sure I'll, I'll have an idea and i would go like okay this could be cool and i'll i'll, I'll lay down a demo and some and drums and stuff and send it and they'd be like oh that's cool it's one of the heavy ones it's kind of gritty and, and heavy but then when i'd come home and andy and i would work on something and be like oh i've got this really pretty chord progression on the acoustic guitar and then i okay sick and then take that add some synths over it or try to write some lyrics that are a little less about nothing and more like meaningful to an extent i mean as far as astro's yeah. lyrics can be um so that collaboration is still absolutely necessary and i think now that we're all back together being able to write as the four of us again will be good because hopefully taking this new sound we've got this new fusion of of our previous sounds but now writing together as opposed to just me and Andy at times, I think will will benefit us a lot. Uh, you touched briefly on going into bars to play shows and being underage. <laughs> like you can't spend any more time than just what they're paying you to be there for. I, I feel like that's such a core part of a music scene, especially in Kingston is, you know, the, the bar scene, the drinking scene, stuff like that. How do you guys find or how did you find, I guess you could say, the music scene in Kingston uh, being from a younger perspective where some of that world is almost shut off to you because of stuff like, you know, legal drinking age and all that sort of jazz? Well, <laughs> well, it it came down to a lot of like we'd get asked to to come play with a band. A band would say, like, "Oh, you guys are cool. Come open for us. Can you bring in a crowd?" And we'd be like, "Well, can we make it an all ages show?" Like <laughs> it, it came down to the audience a lot of the times where it's like, "Yeah, we could we could bring in a crowd. They're all seventeen though, so none of them can get in here, right?" And that kind of lost us a few opportunities because like, they're just not going to do it. They don't want to bend to that. Now we have the benefit, thankfully, where like when we played the mansion a couple months ago, we were able to bring in a lot of friends and, and fill the place and, and have a lot of fun. But at the time, that ended up being more of the issue. Like I don't think, at least from my end, it, it wasn't as big of a bother that we couldn't hang around and be there. It did suck being like, okay, you got to go now, <laughs> like getting kicked <laughs> out. But oh. it mostly came down to the audience. Like we want to have 
as many people come see us as we can. And if they can't, just because they're a year too young or something, that <laughs> sucks, right? But it was a uh, it was a good like gimmick though. At the same time, yeah, uh, it was like an excellent little gimmick that we had starting because I remember always saying like every show be like tim our drummer's 15 and that would just make people go crazy (laughs) and stuff especially like when you play and people are already kind of drunk in a bar and stuff they're like wow how's a 15 year old playing we don't really have that gimmick anymore so that was a nice little like (laughs) you could keep it going just every year just the age gap grows more and more yeah i know i say 18 now and no one cares well we've all plateaued (laughs) now none none of us have gotten any better we're just getting older so (laughs) And, and like at one of our most recent shows we had we had for the first time since we had played uh, like pre-COVID, like as we were younger and, and somebody came up and they said, how old are you guys? And we we're like, eh, like about 20. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. And then that was it. But before it used to be like, oh yeah, we're like 17, 18, 15. They're like, wow, no way. That's crazy. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, okay, cool. That kind of, that, that makes sense. That adds up and they just leave. So yeah, it's not as cool. Like Tim said with 18. Yeah. But, well, I'm 19 in two weeks, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how many all ages venues are there in kingston it's a, a perspective i've never really thought of it's usually i'm uh, you know many. half cut when i'm there um i think it's like i don't even know aside from the new broom factory that opened up that is making a point to be all ages which is really sick for a lot of a lot of bands and a lot of new bands coming up and younger bands um and that will probably encourage younger bands but i think it just comes down to like some places just say we'll make this all ages some are like really foot down we won't do it um i don't know if there's any that are like super adamant or open about being all ages. Um, they just will like make the change sometimes. But for the most part, a lot of them are 19 plus. It's very, very 19 plus yeah. here, which it, isn't bad. It makes sense, but just depends if it's a small venue that has a bar, they want to make money off the gig, right? Like that's at the <laughs> yeah. end of the day, at the end of the day, they need to make you some gotta, money. You got to right? do that. So and it makes sense. Absolutely. And you did touch on the broom factory. I want to go back to that because you guys were the very first band to perform at the broom factory when they had their grand opening, I guess a month ago, two months, something like that. End of August. I think we played end of August, end of August early September. Yeah. Something like somewhere, that, yeah. somewhere in that area. What, uh, what did you find that venue to be like? I haven't had the chance to check it out. I remember actually I was on my way. I was driving past that venue on my way somewhere else. And I was like, God, I wish I could go in and check out that venue. <laughs> check out that show what's it been like what was it uh like to be the first ones there it's one of those places where like you go see a big band or something you're like okay the show was cool whatever the artist was great but every now and then you'll see someone somewhere go the venue was so cool like yeah the artist was cool but the space was so cool like the just having this like long hallway with like the it's not finished yet of course but like just the cement floor and like the beams and the ceiling and everything it was so cool the new gear and everything so it sounds great and the the guy who we had the the pleasure of working with to mix us made us sound great so we felt great up on stage the energy there is awesome like everyone just it's very cozy i really hope it blows up and we can play there again because it's awesome yeah it's an awesome place it's one of the uh, like one of the best sounding shows we've gotten to do especially like for an on stage mix so any bands that want to play there, go play there because it's going to yeah. sound great for You'll you. You'll be able to hear yourself on stage. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's crazy. Uh, it's a really cool venue. I Like as Ben said, I hope it really catches on in Kingston because it's it's a really neat spot. It's a really unique type venue and there's um, it's very different from a bar, which is cool because a lot of the live music scene is, is bar-based in Kingston and it's really cool to have a space that A is all ages so anybody can go, any bands can play there. And, uh, and it's just different. It's just a and cool it does place have a bar be. there. It does have a bar too, yeah, yeah. with good beer. Yeah. <laughs> so, as we as we found out after our show yeah. that night. <laughs> so. But not Tim, of course. But not Tim, of course, yeah. Not no. for another two weeks. Not for another two weeks. Got to book another weeks. show at the Broom Factory yeah. in two weeks, then you'll be good. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And you did touch on they really want to be all ages. I think that's also they want to do like earlier shows there too, right? I think I saw yeah. an article where um, they were talking about how that was one of the things they really wanted to touch on is shows that are earlier in the day for people who have other commitments, going to bed for work yeah, or yeah. having <laughs> kids or anything like that, which I think is an interesting perspective, and I want to get your thoughts on this. I've heard lots of people complain that shows sometimes start too late in Kingston. Sometimes a headliner won't go on till 11 o'clock or midnight. Have yeah. you experienced mm-hmm. that yourselves? A hundred percent. We uh, yeah. we had we played uh, like our first show back in Kingston in the summer in August. We played The Mansion, and uh, we had Willie Nilly and Hollywood play with us, and they I think the show started at nine thirty, so it was like eleven eleven fifteen. I can't quite remember the time, and we were we were standing out there, and all our friends and everybody's like, "When are you going on? Like we've been, <laughs> we've been here, we're yeah. we're ready to go." Uh, it's it's late. I thought you guys were going on at ten or ten thirty, and we're like, I I thought so too. I don't know. Um, so I think that's a 
that's a great idea to have earlier shows. I think it's easier to get people out to that sometimes because it's not like come come see us at eleven and get home at two <laughs> yeah. or something like that, yeah. right? Like here's your whole night and next morning written off. Um, yeah, so I think it's totally a great idea for it to be done. I think we started playing at like seven thirty or something. Yeah. I can't remember, um, which is a you know people will come out for that, and it's easier like. Uh, it encourages like weeknight shows too because nobody's going to go to an 11 o'clock start on like a Tuesday or Wednesday, but maybe a 7 o'clock one, people will be there. So some means, people will. Some people will, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've had some rough Wednesdays or Thursdays after yeah. Tuesday or Wednesday yeah. night shows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Out of the two can until three. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Well, we talked uh, We talked a little bit and talked about uh, your new sound, your new stuff. Uh, do you want to throw to a song right now? Sure. Sure. Yeah. What well, are we going to hear? Let's play uh, Sci-Fi Radio, the title track from the new album. Uh, It's going to be out as a single soon, but we'll play it for you now. Thank you for listening to Kingston Live. Be sure to subscribe on your platform of choice and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. For more great Kingston music, check out the Kingston Live playlist on Spotify. For show listings, artist info, and all things Kingston music, check out kingstonlive.ca. You can also hear our sister show, Kingston Live On Air, on Amherst Island Radio and CFRC.
Kingston Live, that was Sci-Fi Radio from the Astros. Title track off the new album coming out in November. November 25th, is that the release date? Yes. Awesome. So tell me about the creation of that album. Uh, how was it made? You know, what uh, what led to it? Yada, yada. Oh, this this one's for me. Okay, <laughs> this, this one's on me. What am I going to say about it? <laughs> um, well, it's it's weird because there's there's some stuff from this one. Like, there, there was a... Uh, a song for for this record that was written like around the same time that we were doing the EPs that came out the songs from the basement and it ended up getting cut from the album but stuff that had been floating around forever finally got used we had a couple of riffs that that got recycled and stuff um, but really it came down to um, when I was at school doing audio engineering I just started getting better at doing stuff in the computer and being able to make demos and stuff so the demos stopped being a voice memo of of of, of wow sorry of <laughs> us playing in a room my bad um and it started becoming like a full finished song almost as a demo it would still be programmed drums and the the vocals would be kind of rough and auto-tuned and whatever but it gave a much better idea and it gave us something to to listen to so instead of just listening to a demo and then getting to work on the song when we were together it was we have a Dropbox with a finished song that you can listen to for fun and go, okay, this sounds good, but also now we can add add more stuff to this. Um, some of my favorite parts of that would be going going home and working on a song with Andy, and then we'd get super excited about this idea, and then, okay, I'm going to go home and make the demo now, and I'm going to get it all put together and put the synths on it and everything, and then we'd get all excited about that. Um, so really, it, it all came from me learning more about being able to make music on my own in the computer plugging the guitar straight into the computer to just make it work or learning how to program drums better trying to program stuff as i imagine tim might play it that kind of thing throwing in a, a, a guitar and then turning it down an octave to make it be a bass stuff like that um and really the the sound kind of came out of that as opposed to just us turning on the fuzz pedal that we like and Tim going hard it was like okay well what if what if I try this instead and then and this happens right or like different lyrical ideas like a lot of our, our stuff the lyrics are just things that I think sound cool like phrases that sound cool together that don't necessarily have a deeper meaning but then with some of the newer songs trying okay maybe let's maybe try to have a through line of something maybe so there's <laughs> something to connect to here as opposed to just some cool words so of course there's still some of that on the album, some classic Astros Space Rock. Space, space Rock, rock. <laughs> yeah, Space Rock. There's oh, there's yeah. a there's a bunch of that for sure. Um It works with the title, Sci Fi Radio. Yeah. Yeah, that it does. Uh track nine, Cosmic Latte. <laughs> but uh yeah, it's uh it's great. I love it. I I love how the new stuff sounds. Like I'm I'm super proud of of how it's turned out. And how did the recording shake down? With you guys kind of scattered across Ontario, were you able to come together and record at once, or were you doing different parts in different cities at different times? Sometimes. Uh, a lot of it would be because uh, I, I did my program in London at the school I was at, and then I was lucky enough to stick around and, and do an internship there, which basically gave me access to all the studio space that was there and all the mics and all the gear. Was that Fanshawe? Um, uh, OA Art. Ah. Actually, it's a, it's a much smaller school, but great place. Um, lovely people. Um and so a lot of it did end up being me. It would be, I'd be behind the console with an amp out on the floor and just playing along and recording it or doing vocals in my bedroom or something. Every now and then Andy was able to come up. Uh, we'd, we'd get him up to London and, and record some acoustic or some guitar stuff. Um, a lot of the bass on the album and the drums are me, unfortunately. As, <laughs> as much as it sucked, it just came down to circumstance, um, not being able to get everyone up. There is a song on the album track two where we were all able to get together at a studio and, and everyone is on it, Tim. It's Tim on drums, uh, Ben on bass, and Andy and I and everything, and, and that one's a really fun song. Um, it just ended up being a lot of me just because of that's how it how it worked out. Um, hopefully the next time around we don't have to deal with that again. Um, but that was the case for a lot of it. Right on. We've touched on uh, London a few times, you've mentioned, and I also, I went to Fanshawe at London, that's why I brought it up. I was hoping right. we'd have something in common. <laughs> uh, but I find London and Kingston have a similar music scene in such a concentrated downtown and lots of really small pubs and bigger venues kind of scattered together. Uh, what did you find as uh, as musicians and as music fans, uh, comparable or non-comparable between the music scene here and the music scene there? We have only played one show in London as a band and I think most of the time that Ben spent there for the two years a lot of it was shut down or in that sort of state where it would come back and forth but there we met a lot of cool bands there I mean there's one that we love called Lovers uh, that we we were lucky enough to play with uh, for their album release show there and 
they were super cool guys like there's tons of great bands there um and it, it definitely is like the same sort of thing like bar shows and and that sort of style and then and one kind of main bigger venue where where um sort of mid-level bands are passing through which is a really cool place um so yeah i i would say like it is pretty similar i would say it's similar in the sense that the bands feel like a community there like they all sort of know each other and i feel like that's the same here with kingston like you sort of know people and pass through and everybody's sort of aware of each other and and members and all that and so when you meet up at shows you know who it is and you're kind of talking and picking up like like old friends and i would say it was the same sort of vibe when we were there in london and meeting those london bands they all kind of knew each other and they're like yeah we're playing with you next week and that's that's those sort of conversations so they were cool it's a cool place um there's a big genre difference for sure, though. Like, even though the the community feels the same and it's very tight knit, London has a great, like, a great punk scene. There's a lot of a lot of bands doing that where they'll play a super tiny place and crowd surf across the tables <laughs> and, and and go nuts. Um, but then Kingston, at least as far as I I've noticed, has more of like a rock scene or a folk scene, right? And it doesn't mean there's any like the energy is still the same. Everyone's great. It's a great community. But it just goes to show you, like, doesn't matter what the genre is or what people are playing, right? It's just, it's music, and we're all musicians just trying to be friends and play shows, right? Hell yeah. Well put. I love that. Thank you. I think that about uh, covers it for everything I had prepared. Is there anything else you guys want to hit on? What do people need to know about the Astros? Come to our shows. They're fun. <laughs> yeah. We we, uh, we want you to have fun at our shows. We're trying to... We, we played a lot of, um, like, as Ben kind of touched on, actually, like, we played in Ottawa and we played in London with these like punk bands and they kind of showed us how to perform a little, like how, how to bring this into Kingston um, and get a little rowdy and crazy at our shows and yeah. we want some of that. Um, we wear pastel colored jumpsuits. Just come see the show. Yeah, come have fun. Like, <laughs> come watch Andy assault me on stage yeah, while I try to I, sing. I like headbutt him and we kind of fight up there. And It's like pro wrestling basically up there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, get, you, you get a wrestling show, you get music, you get it all. Uh, crowd surfing if there's enough people. Yep. Um, we played the mansion in the summer and it was during a heat wave and everybody <laughs> took their shirts off. It's just, yeah. you know, you never know what's going to happen at one of our shows, so come to one. And that's kind of the... The thing, I don't know. What, what do you think people got to know, Tim? I think I think that you said it perfectly. Come yeah. to our shows. Come to, <laughs> Listen come to the our music, shows. Stream the music. <laughs> yeah. Stream the music. Um, if you're if you want to be extra cool, buy some merch too. We we do appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> at, at a show. Um, yeah, I don't know. We just want everybody who shows up to feel like they're part of the show and having fun. And as long as you're having fun, we're having fun. Sci-fi radio coming out uh, November 25th. Do you have any shows around that coming up that uh, we could plug right now? Uh, we're playing the mansion a week later, December second. Hell yeah! Uh, with harmonies, and so come out to that. Definitely come out to that. It's gonna be a banger. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Can't wait. I'll see you then. Thank yeah. you so much for coming in. Thanks Thank for you. having Thank us. You. This has been Kingston Live. We encourage you to rate us on your listening platform of choice and subscribe where possible. For show listings, artist info, and all things Kingston music, check out KingstonLive.ca. Kingston Live was produced in Kingston by Titan Sound. Hosted by Riley Jabor. Voiceover and technical production by John Sanfilippo. Writing and research by Peter Sanfilippo. Executive producer Rob Howard. Kingston Live is a member of the Canadian Live Music Association. We'd love to hear from you. Email us at podcast at kingstonlive.ca.